G'day, I'm Tim Thompson. Today I'm going to take you through the process of running out prefabricated mesh, straining it and attaching it to a fence that you're constructing. Now in past videos I've already gone through how to mark out and set up the posts and the wires for this fence. The links are in the description. In this video I'm going to be concentrating on how to attach this, how to roll it out, how to strain it and what your options are at this end to make your fence look really good. I'm also going to give you some tips along the way to make working with this stuff less frustrating, more enjoyable and ultimately satisfying. <laughs> now we're dealing with wire, so on with the speed dealers and away we go. And here's a top tip, when you're putting out your mesh, orient the smaller aperture holes to the bottom of the fence because that's where you want them when you finish. You don't want your small holes at the top. Now there's just a couple of notes on the dumb end or the non-straining end. Make sure that you tie this end off evenly to your end post so that your picket wires line up with your end post and you don't have them at an angle. Even if you have undulations or hills in your fence line, you solve that in other ways. You want to try and get your pickets nice and straight with your post. It gives you a nice even start. This is a good long straight run so it shouldn't be too much trouble for me to strain it all up in one go. If I did have undulations to take care of, I would take care of them in the middle with what's called a gut strain. And I've covered that in another video that I've got a link to in the description, but basically it means joining the mesh halfway along the fence line and taking out the kinks of the slope in that join. Put all your posts in an even distance because of your stock posts and they're marked with these red marks it's made that super easy to get these all exactly correct. That's going to make the application of netting to this fence super super easy. The next thing I did was I ran out two save wires. Now this is just normal two and a half mil high tensile wire that is strained at one end and tied off and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use these post clips and I'm going to actually attach this wire to the third top hole in each of these posts and also to the bottom visible hole and what that's going to do is it's going to give me a framework to hang my mesh off before I start straining it. Now the next thing I want to do is every couple of panels I want to attach the prefabricated mesh to my top save wire with my Jambro Holgerin gun. And what that's going to do is it's going to keep the fence up off the ground, stop it catching on little sticks and things like that in the ground and it's going to make the process of straining so much easier. So now it's starting to look like a fence, isn't it? Not much more to go now. All we've got to do is strain it up properly and tie it off, and I'll show you a couple of ways of doing that. Now we're up to the fun bit where we actually get to strain up our mesh and see the fence take shape. Now, I know that there are people who try and get away with a couple of pieces of timber and a few bolts. You'll get uneven results, and quite frankly, it's dangerous, and you'll never see me doing it on the channel. Get yourself a decent set of prefabricated mesh straining bars, they don't cost as much as you think and you will use them time and time again and get great results. Now your prefabricated mesh straining bars come with two parts. Let's call it the small part and the large part. That makes it nice and easy. Now you're going to want to put these on your prefab mesh a fair way down the run because this wire tends to take up quite a bit. So what I normally do is I lay my strainers out connected to the end post first and that gives me a guide as to where I should put my hooks for the straining bars. Now I'm going to put the small part underneath the mesh, large part on top, clamp them together with the sets of wedges, attach them to my strainers and away I go. Now you can just strain off the centre pin but I don't recommend that. Once again you'll get uneven results. You're much better off to spring for another set of strainers and strain off the top and the bottom 
Now just before we hammer all the wedges home, we'll do a couple of final checks. We'll make sure that the picket wire is lined up perfectly straight with our strainer plate. That means that we'll have good even tension. Our strainer plate's within reaching distance of our strainers, but they're as far away from the end post as possible, allowing for take up. Once we've checked on those two things and we're happy with the position of our strainer plate, simply hammer your wedges home. Now next up, you're gonna to wanna to tie off with a termination knot about a 15 centimeter or six inch length of two and a half mil high tensile wire for each one of your line wires. There are eight line wires in the prefab mesh that I'm using, so I'm gonna put eight termination knots with about 15 centimeters of wire sticking out, one for each of them, and that's what I'm gonna to strain to and join off to. Make sure you put all your termination knots on the same side of the post. Put your bottom set of strainers on first, putting a very light strain on. That'll hold everything in place. Long enough for you to fix your top set of strainers to the top straining hook. And start straining up your mesh. Do a few links on the top, then do a few links on the bottom and rotate. Now, how tight do you go? Well, there's a simple trick. You see these little kinks down along the line wires? When they go to about half their size, you've strained the wires up enough. Generally, somewhere between 100 and 120 kilos of strain per line wire is sufficient to get your prefabricated mesh fully strained. Don't overstrain it because a lot of meshes will have mild wire in them, and if you overstrain them, you'll only stretch them and weaken the fence. Remember, prefabricated mesh acts like a trampoline, you want it to have some bounce. So overstraining is actually gonna reduce the performance of the fence. So have a look at your kinks when you start and go till they're about halfway bent out and then you know you got your strain tension right. Now when you finish straining, you wanna do a couple of checks. The first one is you need to make sure that the picket wires are roughly in line with your straight intermediate posts. If they're not, just put a little bit more tension on the bottom or top and get the strain tension nice and even down through the whole fence. The next thing is use your leg muscles, walk the fence and make sure that it's not caught on anything and it's mucking up your strain. So now we're all strained up and all we've got to worry about is this two or three foot section of loose wire at this end. I'm going to show you a couple of ways of tying off to our end twitches that will ensure that this doesn't take away from the wonderful straining job we've done on the rest of the fence. The first trick is to use a set of fence stretchers like this and some crimp sleeves. And then these are a really strong, neat and economic option at only about 65 cents a join. It's not going to cost you a lot to join your eight line wires. The added benefit of using the fence stretchers is that they hold the crimp nice and straight for you and there's no more dramas trying to use a third hand to get your crimp sleeve on properly. And as you see, when you take these off, you lose almost zero tension in the wire. Another option is, of course, a tool like the Max Tensor, little joining clips, and these come with a tool that allows you to take any of the slack out of those line wires as well. The advantage of these, of course, is that they're super easy. You don't need to really know how to fence to use them. The disadvantage is they're not quite as strong as crimps and knots, and they cost a lot more. So it's really just up to you and how much effort you want to put into building the fence. This is a nice, easy option. So 
so there you go the fence is strained up nice and tight even the last foot or so has really good tension on it either because we used the max tensor with its application tool or we because we used crimp sleeves with the fence fixer links to all of that equipment are in the description below so you can choose the method you prefer so now it's just a case of easing off our strainers and as you can see i've lost less than a link of tension using the method of straining to the end post that I've used. It is really well worthwhile using the right tools to get this job done because your fence will be nice and strong for a long, long time. Easy peasy. Now because I've already attached my save wires top and bottom to all of the posts, all I've got to do now is go along and put about two or three clips top and bottom on each panel to hold my prefabricated wire to my two and a half mil high tensile wire that I ran out of save wires. Now that my fence is all clipped up, it's back to running some line wires. I want to run two more and put them in the two top holes of each of the steel posts. I'm leaving this till last because remember, we start tightening at the bottom and work our way up. So we started with the bottom save wire, then went to the top save wire, then attached our mesh. Now we're doing the top two wires to make our fence, rather than 900 mil high, make it 1.2. I'm also clipping one of the middle line wires just so if animals rub up against the back side of the fence they don't bow it out. This is not taking any enormous weight or strain of the fence, it's just keeping the belly of the prefabricated mesh in the right place. Some people will run an additional line wire in this position and clip to the line wire. That is an option that I find with small stock just clipping it off to this post is certainly enough. Well, there we go. There's our super easy little fence all set up and it didn't take too long and we didn't need too many special tools or skills. In a couple of weeks time, we're gonna come back to this fence line and I'll show you some tips for attaching gates easily to steel end posts and you don't need special skills, tools and equipment to do it. But next week, we're back to the knot testing and I've got some more knots for you. Until then, please hit the subscribe button, give it a thumbs up and there's plenty more on timthompson.ag.